What's up, you guys? This is going to be your monthly reading. Taurus is my fellow Taurus. What's up? What's good with you? So this will be for July 2019 for my Taurus, the Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus. Um, you guys could be cross-watching for Taurus, or you guys could just have heavy placement of Taurus in your chart. Um, so let's go ahead and get into this reading. I am going to do a general overview spread first. And then I'm going to do a love overview for you guys. Keep in mind, these readings are general. They're not personal. So you take what resonates with you or, you know, use your discernment of what may resonate with you and may not, what may not be for you, okay? So hopefully this reading will resonate with those who it's meant to resonate with. And anyone else that it does not resonate with, may you find the reader that is for you. Okay. The victory card wanted to fly out, which is number 28. I'm going to be using the energy oracle cards first. Okay, you have the fifth chakra with Archangel Gabriel, number 39. So the, the fifth chakra is the throat chakra. That is the chakra that's ruled, um, Taurus is ruling chakra. So you have number nine with broken heart. Okay. All right, so you got a lot of nines, numbers of completion. So number 28 technically is number 10 if you do two plus eight, right? Then you got 39, so there's a nine there, and you got number nine. So this is the number of completion. So I feel that there will be some sense of um, victories and overcoming a lot of different energies, a lot of different situations. Some of you guys may be mending and healing a broken heart. So the heart chakra, even though it didn't come up, I feel like the heart chakra may be something that's of importance and focus. But the fifth chakra with Archangel Gabriel, I feel like there will be a lot of spiritual communication. There will be a lot of needing to speak your truth. There will be a, a lot of healing, the throat chakra. So if you guys happen to have um, throat issues, coughing and stuff like that, don't leave it unattended. But know that this may have something to do with what's being healed. The more and more you speak your truth. Um, it could also be that Archangel Gabriel can help you with assisting with assist, um, with communication. Um, speaking your truth about something. You will gain victory over expressing yourself, especially about things that may be um, bothering you. You know, certain, it may be that you need to express your feelings or distaste of something, um, dislike for things. It, obviously in a mature manner but I feel that this is part of a reason the reason that this is happening is because this is helping you release some things that don't serve you um, there will be some sort of successful outcome in communications if you guys are um, if that's your career if this is like school and you have to write some sort of um, essay or something like that just take what resonates you will win the favor over something as it pertains to communication. So this could be job interviews as well. Take whatever resonates. Let's go ahead and look into the tarot aspect. Let's look at the tarot with the melanated classic tarot, which is one of my favorite decks. Um, if you guys would like to purchase this deck, you can just Google it. I found it on Instagram, melanated classic tarot, if you guys are interested. Thank you, most high God. My answer is my spirit guides. My angels, thank you for your love and guidance and assistance. I trust that this reading is divinely guided, divinely protected. Thank you. What is the general energy for Taurus for July 2018? Those born under the sign of Taurus. Okay, the magician wanted to come out. The Childish Gambino card. <laughs> he looks like him to me. Ace of Cups. I'm liking these energies so far. The Six of Pentacles. Which does happen to be a Taurus card. The Nine of Swords. And the Hierophant, which is also a Taurus card. So, let's see. Overall energy says that this is a month of heavy, pro I'm hearing product, productivity, production, um, creative energies. So, for a lot of you, this will be a month of, of manifestation, creative energy you have a lot of yellow and reds in your spread so this will represent the solar plexus the root chakra 
Okay, you might want to ground yourself this month, ground your ideas, bring them to a reality. But the Ace of Cups, so you guys are having a hard time with recepting, recepting, receiving and being receptive to especially some sort of love energy, romantic energy maybe, or just support, um, opening up your yourself or extending yourself in some way. You're having a difficult time with that. Two of Pentacles. I feel like this could be like, um, for some of you, as far as should I, shouldn't I, you question yourself a lot when it comes to being receptive to things. Um, it could even be your own opportunities and gifts that you question. You question your own gifts. You question your own abilities or you question the um, genuineness of other people or should I share this with this person should I should I not and that's part of the throat chakra energy too so you got to speak up about something speak up about it then you have the six of wands or six of pentacles excuse me the six of pentacles and I feel like spirit is telling you that you do have something to offer and I feel whatever it is you need to give it if this is about receiving, be receptive to receiving or allow other people to give you something of value. This could be financially. This could be something that just has tangible, uh, something atta tangible attached to it. Then you've got the nine of swords. So spirit is telling you to focus on your doubts and your fears. Like what is it that's causing you such doubt, such confusion, such um so much stress because it's like all this positive energy but it's like this energy sticks out like a sore thumb it's like why is this card even here it's like it has no it has no business being here but i feel like spirit wants you to address your fears the boogeyman the elephant in the room because you have the hierophant at the end this is you gaining yourself this is belief in yourself but if yes this represents spiritual institutions and commitments and traditions or whatever blah 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 but because this is a Taurus card and you are a Taurus what you're going to gain is that belief within yourself that investing in you and believing in you especially if you have something innovative to bring to the table or creative or some sort of um teaching or skill that may require you to come out in the forefront. It's like maybe everyone else believes in you, but you, but you. And what spirit is trying to get you to is this point with the Hierophant card to where you believe in yourself and not looking at your past failures and the things that may have not been of your highest good anyway to even achieve. So why stress over those things that didn't go your way? Now let's look at the love energy. I'm going to use my very own deck, which is the Relationship Oracle deck. You guys can purchase this um, on my website. The link will be in the description. This is a big-ass oracle. I call it my big-ass oracle anyway. Um, it's blind people friendly. So if you guys are, you know, glasses wearers, you guys have a hard time reading these cards, you will have no problem with reading them because they're so bold. I know I have issues with seeing sometimes. I need to be wearing glasses and readers and things like that, but... Um, all right, so regardless of Taurus's status and love this month, what is the collective energy for Taurus's for love and relationships and partnerships for July 2019, most high God? What is the collective energy? What is the collective energy? Okay, October. Divine timing. Desire and chemistry, signs and synchronicity. This is almost exactly the same as Leo's reading. And I did Leo's a couple of videos behind. So that's very weird. July. Some of you guys may be dealing with a Leo. I don't know. We'll see. It's interesting though. I think this was the exact, if I'm not mistaken, y'all. I believe this was the exact placement of Leo's reading. So if you guys have like a Leo Venus maybe or a Leo Moon or just some other Leo aspect in your chart or you guys are dealing with a Leo, I would watch that reading for whatever reason. Or maybe even if you if you just feel guided to, maybe you don't even know what's in your chart, but you feel guided to watch it, 
maybe you'll benefit from it because I don't know that's kind of weird anyway let's go ahead and tap into this energy I'm going to clarify with the tarot so you have the nine of pentacles with October the emperor with the divine timing card seven of swords with desire and chemistry ten of swords with signs of synchronicity and the hermit card clarifying July so with October you have the nine of pentacles so in October I feel that for a lot of you you will come to a place of balance and and, and be, I feel like this is seeing the fruits of your labor and being proud of yourself and loving up on yourself but I feel like this is also some sort of financial abundance. So this could have everything to do with the relationship with yourself. Okay, so maybe not romantic, obviously, but with yourself. Um, this is also the single and loving it card. You know, for some, I do see her as being happy with herself and content with what she has and all of that. So I feel for some of you, this could be a point if you are in a relationship that went sour um, you're going to reach a place where you're content with being single and not content where you're just, you know, just, oh, I'm just living with it. I'm just dealing with it. No, you're genuinely happy. You're grateful for something. You may also be coming into a relationship. This could be the ending of that singlehood. The divine timing with the emperor. So some of you guys are struggling this month with understanding why you have to wait for love or why Something with a specific counterpart is not taking place the way that you want it to. If there's someone special in your life, because the emperor can represent an important figure in your life. So a male figure for majority of you, or it could be a masculine figure. But this, when is this going to come into my life? When am I going to get into a place of stability with someone? That could be your question. Um, some of you guys may be looking at your age and judging yourself by your age. Um, if you have an Aries lover, yeah, you may feel like this person is dragging their feet with committing or marriage of some sort, or you just feel like the order that you put in with the universe is just taking too long, basically. That perfect counterpart. Then you have desire and chemistry with the seven of swords. So some of you guys may be, um... Running from a connection that you actually have a desire for, you could be denying the attraction of something um, or someone, or you just feel like you're deceiving yourself and telling yourself that you don't have a desire for love or that you are happy being single or um, that there's no one out there that could fit your needs. Because I kind of get like this, um, what's that movie called? It was a movie with Gabrielle Union. It was Gabrielle Union and it had Megan Good in it. It had Dwayne Martin in it. LL Cool J was in it. Um, anyway, so it was like this, um, Gabrielle Union's character was a like real independent woman. She was all about her sisters and she kind of wanted her sisters to, to not be all about their men and their husbands and things like that because she was single and I think she was very picky about the type of men she had so it could be a syndrome of this and playing yourself and pretending like you don't desire or have desires for love for some of you for others it's like your approach i feel like a spirit telling you um not to settle and play yourself into being in a relationship that does not serve you or you know projecting certain desires onto yourself because of not wanting to be alone or being single and spirit is telling you that because spirit is also telling you to be mindful of the type of people that you have around you or attracting with the seven of swords because they may not be what they seem signs and synchronicities with the ten of swords you're going to see a lot of synchronicity surrounding closure and endings and releasing okay um maybe the need of healing so you may see a lot of tens a lot of nines a lot of ones which can also represent beginnings um, you could also see like a lot of um, crows or something that represents death. You may have, um, you may see dead animals on your, your trail. Those are actually good omens, contrary to belief. Look it up. But, um, and it's funny because 
my cat brings dead birds to my door all the time and it's weird but people say that those are good omens but it could be like crows or something these could be a, a sign of synchronicity that something is ending something significant is ending in your life for the better of course with july the hermit card this month is going to be very enlightening for you it's going to show you how much you've actually grown and how much you've actually learned the things that you've gathered and i feel like it's going to help put you on the next track the next step so let's clarify with the Romance Angels and then that will conclude our reading for this month. <clears throat> yes, you guys could be dealing with, let's see, um, did I shuffle them all back? Seven of Swords is Aquarius, Nine of Pentacles is Virgo, the Emperor is Aries, the um, Hermit is Virgo, the Ten of Swords is Gemini. So any of that could resonate with you or those could be something significant, signs significant to you. What else does spirit want for us to know when it comes to love? Okay, so wedding. This also came out for Leo. I don't know why I'm getting something about Leos. So you have unrequited love and forgiving, um, forgiving and learning. So past relationships and commitments, you're going to have to forgive these connections that did not serve you. The word chemistry comes out. There's not enough attraction or chemistry to keep this relationship going. So in the past, there may have been some bonds that just were not even worth you, your investing and putting your energy into. So now it's up to you to learn from those things and forgive so that you can move forward and release. Because for a lot of you, it could be that you're hanging on to certain things that's keeping you and preventing you from some sort of commitment that's already in your life. Or the marriage that you're already in. Or potentially manifesting a marriage. You guys got to release this resentment and this energy. Alright, much love as always. If you guys would like to book a reading, don't forget to check the description box below. And I will see you guys back next month. Until next time. Peace.